time of year again, folks. Time to reflect on some of the best places to eat in Hampton Roads and beyond. From the peninsula to the south side and down to North Carolina. I'm checking out your favorite restaurants across the region. Don't go away. This is Friday Flavor Extra Bite. Well, thanks for watching 13 News Now. I'm Bethany Reese, and you are watching Friday Flavor Extra Bite. Now, over the last 11 months, I've had the pleasure of taking your recommendations to check out some of the best dining options across Hampton Roads and Northeast North Carolina. So let's get right to it. We began in Virginia Beach at a cafe that brings a little extra happiness to the city. I wanted to go with something very simple and quaint. Everyone wants to be happy. Smiles can be found inside of Happy Cafe. I started Happy Cafe in my hometown of Blackstone, Virginia in 2016. Owner Tamika Wallace brought the happiness to Virginia Beach in 2019. I do all of my own recipes. Serving up lunch and breakfast. In the morning they want pancakes, waffles, French toast. They want the blues browns, which is a hash brown recipe that I got from my dad. Uh, I recently lost my dad last month. Their brunch is tasty. The waffles are delicious and blues browns are cheesy and cooked to perfection. A lot of people come here for a club sandwich. Me, I am one of those people. This is the best club sandwich I have ever tried. And when I tell you Tamika's mac and cheese is the ultimate side, get it. It is cheesy baked heaven. And don't forget dessert with their cake donut and ice cream called it the graduate donut. A young lady was graduating from high school, and so I said, well, we'll give you a treat. And she said, do you have cake and ice cream? And so I said, hmm, we got the cake donut, so let's just put icing on it, make it warm, put ice cream on it, dress it up. It's applause worthy and left me speechless with its deliciousness. It's done with a lot of love. And that's evident in every dish at Happy Cafe. We just try our best to constantly make people smile and make them happy. Mission accomplished. Oh, it was so good. Now the Happy Cafe is open from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. during the week. You can go to our website, 13newsnow.com for more information on their hours. And of course, get a look at that menu. And then you just drive 17 minutes east and sits at Virginia Beach Bakery that made a name for itself in 1988. Step with me inside of Angie's Bakery to see how the business is bigger than its baked goods. We make fresh bread every day. Angie's Bakery is needed into Virginia Beach's history. This was one of the first places that started Pandasol. Pandasol, a bread roll recipe that started in the Philippines. Owner Kenneth Garcia Olias says providing for the Filipino community is important. The fact that it's giving people a taste of home and a, a feel of comfort again, you know. He hopes not only to give some a sense of home, but bring others into his. I just thought that, well, the best way to teach someone's culture is through coffee and bread. People come here for the pandasal, of course. I make two variations of that, the original recipe and I make a ube flavored pandasal, which is purple. Ube, a popular and common flavor in the Filipino community. He's incorporating it into more than just the food. Ube latte came about because it was inspired from the recipe of my ube pandasal. If you're not in the mood for that, the options continue. We have what we call ensamada. It's a Filipino brioche style of dough, very fluffy. We coat it with butter and sugar, and I bake that fresh every morning. Yum. My mom's recipe of popia. Popia is like a small biscuit-shaped pastry. It's filled with flavors. Each item, a bite of sweet or savory comfort. But for Ken, the comfort goes beyond the menu. There's a grandfather that would come in and get pandasal and bring it to their grandkids. And as the years come by, I notice it was that grandfather's son coming here with their kid. 
and now they're bringing that pandasal to their grandfather. Maybe as I get older here, I'll see that son grow up and do the same thing. It's just a tradition that just keeps going, you know, and I, I want it to stay in the minds of people my age that this is part of your family. Family that he hopes you can be a part of too. Well, now let's go to a newly opened pizza spot in Norfolk. District of Beats is bringing a new style of pie to Hampton Roads, and I got a first taste. We're bringing something absolutely unique and different to Norfolk and to Virginia and Hampton Roads in general that you really don't find down here. District of Beats is now open in Norfolk's Railroad District. Managing partner Matthew Albano says this pizza is from his home. Well, I'm originally from Connecticut, and the pizza, I think, is astounding. The key, I think, to good New Haven-style pizza is cooking at a very high temperature. They have two Italian wood-fired grills for that. The other component, the dough. The homemade dough is cold-proofed for two days, creating a crunchy yet chewy crust. And first impressions for someone new to the style, it might seem like it's burnt around the edges, but that char actually adds to the flavor. I can confirm it is incredible. We have a lot of great specialty pies that I think really capture the essence of New Haven style pizza. I tried their signature tomato pie first. Crushed tomatoes and really, really good uh, Pecorino Romano cheese. Second or third most popular uh, would be our meatball and ricotta cheese pie. The pizzas are delicious and look, I was a skeptic about the char, but it is so good and they're not done there. We actually have a pasta machine in-house, so we make our own rigatoni and our own spaghetti on premises uh, every day. Their pasta is the ultimate comfort food. Of course, we have a wonderful, huge bar uh, with a lot of specialty cocktails, wine and beer on tap, so a variety of offerings for, for anyone. And yes, it's pronounced a beats. Yeah, most people trip over the name. They think it's a pizza because that's the way it's spelled, but it's actually pronounced a beats. That's the, that's the Italian slang that's developed over the years in New Haven. A slang that I think is about to become very popular in Hampton Roads. District of Beats is now open Tuesday through Wednesdays at 5 p.m. and then Thursday through Sundays starting at noon. They've even got an order online option if you feel like dining at home. Well, after the break, we speak to a dessert expert. The flavors you're going to want to hear about next in this Friday flavor. And later, dining with a purpose. How one restaurateur designed his space to create community. Well, 13 News Now is back with another Friday flavor extra bite. Tis the season for desserts, which for me is probably every season. And a spot in Hilltop has flavors for any taste. But what makes this spot special is the science behind the scoop. Come with me to Gerald's. We don't buy things and open jars and put them in on top of things. We make everything from scratch. Gerald Einhorn opened Gerald's in Virginia Beach after retiring from dentistry. It's like, what would I do at my age? So, ice cream it is. First place, it's old school. It's milk, cream, eggs, and sugar. And if it's chocolate, it's made with chocolate, not chocolate flavoring. What's not so old school? is the way they create the sweet treat. We freeze it with liquid nitrogen because that makes the smoothest possible ice cream. It's scientific perfection. About every week we come up with a kind of an oddball flavor. The options seem endless. Chocolate fudge brownie, strawberry shortcake, peanut brittle, chocolate hazelnut, blueberry crunchy crunch. All of their flavors with some unique twist. You can grab a flight or grab a cake. We have wonderful pastries. Authentic French pastries. Simona is a trained pastry chef, and she proves it with her delicious creations. And coffee lovers, they didn't forget you. We have our own little version of an affogato, which is ice cream with a special kind of a whipped cream topped with a shot of espresso. It's happiness in a cup. 
And regardless of your order, happiness is what they aim for at Gerald's. Sometimes I've had an older person come in and sit down, and I see them eating the ice cream, and they get real quiet. And I, so I go over and I say, how are you doing? They say, uh, I haven't had ice cream like this since I was 10 years old. So, you know, that's the fun of it, it really is. Well, next, we're highlighting a secret treasure buried in the village shops at Rose Hall. What you can expect when visiting the Breadbox Cafe in Virginia Beach. Then, if you're looking for something quick, we've got the perfect place for you. How one restaurant whips up a delicious meal in just a few seconds. hidden gem just off of Virginia Beach Boulevard and lucky for you I don't gatekeep step with me inside of Esma's bread box cafe in Virginia Beach I am born in Bosnia I lived till 94 uh, divorce started in Bosnia 92 Esma Terzic left war in Bosnia and headed to Germany she went back to school, learning to cook. And 2000, we decided to move to United States. Then she opened Esma's Bread Box Cafe in Virginia Beach. When I came here, I just fell in love with it. And I'm still here for now 23 years. It was fun, actually. I didn't think about scary. I was thinking about be successful and make people happy. Oh, yeah. Happiness starts with food. Is food and art. For and me, Esma is Picasso. That's sometimes the menu's long with breakfast classics like French toast, eggs and bacon. Our favorite things is uh, breakfast pizza. We do have a breakfast pizza, which we have meat pizza, veggie pizza. And Get the blueberry cream cheese pizza. It's incredible. And for lunch, try their homemade tomato soup and chicken salad. I have a couple European sandwich, which is chewapi. It's really popular in Bosnia, which how special is also mostly for my country. I do make stuffed cabbage, stuffed peppers, goulash with rice, which is beef stew, lasagna. If you're in the mood for a hearty dinner, get the meatloaf. Esma's partner in the kitchen, Chef Blue, makes some of the best. And don't forget a drink. I try to get some more food and drinks for my country. So I do have it now Bosnian wine and Bosnian beer. I promise whether it's breakfast, lunch or dinner, you will love every bite because of the heart behind it. I just love it. People get so excited about food. People get so happy. When it's people happy, I am happy and keep me going. Esma is the best. Now this next restaurant opened its doors in Virginia Beach in early 2023 and they're taking the road less traveled in their business approach. This Friday flavor takes us to the Rhodes Bistro where the community comes together. the whole thing. We didn't have rules to fall. We're just like, let's go for it. Owner Michael Baldwin and his partners opened the Rhodes Bistro in Virginia Beach with one goal. We live in a, a, a time right now where it's like divide, 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 divide. And, and we really wanted to do the opposite and bring people together. And they do that through good food. American style tapas, so it's designed to be shared. The menu is big, but full of options like wings and mini crab cakes. Pierogies have taken off like mad. And for good reason, I could not stop eating them. They were insanely tasty. Inside, they've created a unique atmosphere. You come in here, you can kind of lounge, have a couple of cocktails, wait for your party, go over there, have the dining experience, and then come back here. And, and finish your night. The other side, just a bit more homey, and that's with purpose. When you throw three plates on the on the table and everybody's like trying it and tasting it, and they start communicating, they start talking, they start even if they don't know each other. We are going to do our best to, to make you have a good time, but also to try to make you meet other people. Like we just we want to see a community build. Um, we want to see people smiling and, and, and joking and having a good time. They hope to help the good times roll with food, drinks. And and live music. We're gonna push jazz, come listen to some jazz. I mean, you're not getting a lot of jazz in this area. 
end of the day, they just hope you test a new route and give the Rhodes Bistro a try. We want to get to know you. It um, has nothing to do with the financial side of things. It's just like we like to meet people. We like to talk to people. Ah, such a good time. Now, this spot is extremely close to the Veterans United Home Loans Amphitheater, so it's the perfect spot to go grab some food, grab a drink, and then walk over and catch a show. Well, a familiar favorite has made its return in Virginia Beach, and this something old comes with something new. Come with me to the oceanfront to see what's hiding inside of Moxie VB. Moxie VB just opened in Virginia Beach. This hotel has amazing rooms and a lobby for all. The bar, the cornhole, the quirky seating, and the games are open to the public. It's a great place to go get drinks, hang out with your friends. Next morning, come down, get the old breakfast that you grew up eating. Around the corner, step back in time inside Belvedere South Coffee Shop and Diner. It's nice bringing back an old staple to Virginia Beach. Yes, manager Timothy Sheets confirms this is modeled after the same Belvedere that stood for 50 years years before closing in 2019. The booths are reminiscent of the old ones. The menu still has the same look and feel. The eye opener is amazing. It's a fried egg with hammer bacon, tomatoes, and Parmesan served on an onion roll. And trust me, get the pancakes as a side. But don't forget lunch either. Their clubs are huge and tasty. Or try the shrimp and grits and some classic curly fries and onion rings. But it's the people that make this food even better. Where's Megan and Monica at again? Megan Mo. Yeah, Megan Mo. A memorable experience. Yes. You'll probably see Monica Clark and Megan Albert working while you're there, and their smiles bring added joy to this spot. So we want to have like really good energy when people come in so they remember kind of how the old Belvedere was. A diner, a community, and a happy place for many. We wanted to keep it where you still had that same old feel, you recognized it. I love the feeling going from like your 50s diner to like a new modern feeling hotel. An unsuspecting but delightful combo, now serving smiles and nostalgia at the oceanfront. Well, the Moxie Lobby is open to the public and Belvedere South is open between 6.30 and 2 p.m. daily. For information on the hotel or the diner, you can head to our website, 13newsnow.com. Well, to Norfolk now, where a new spot is hoping to bring good vibes, good food, and good beer. This Friday flavor takes us to a neighborhood that has a lot of heart and now a new restaurant bearing its name. Come with me to the Ghent. Kind of catering to everybody, you know, and that at the end of the day, that's kind of the goal. The Ghent in Norfolk is doing that with self pour taps as soon as you enter. TVs on the walls, seating inside, and on the rooftop, at a table, or a fire pit. We're not looking to turn and burn tables. We want people to think about this as like their neighborhood spot. Owner Wayne Mayhew moved here from North Carolina to open the Ghent. He says it's an atmosphere for anyone. If they want to eat downstairs and then come hang out on the rooftop, or they are there on the rooftop and it's way too hot and they want to get some AC, they can go downstairs. It's kind of, you know, like an adult playground. They serve good drinks and good food, like the shrimp po' boy pizza. It's a little bit of an oddball, and when people see it, they kind of hesitate. Oh yeah, shrimp on pizza, that sounds weird. It's so good. I also tried their Korean barbecue wings, their garlic parm wings, pork belly tacos with a street corn mix, and their loaded fries with brisket, bacon, house-made beer cheese, and ranch. They are all so delicious, but my personal favorite is the blueberry goat cheese burger. It's a blueberry spread on the bun and goat cheese smashed in between two thin patties topped with arugula. If you like goat cheese, get this burger. When I came up with it, I had my wife in mind because she loves goat cheese. And she loved the burger, so I was like, okay, this is going on the menu. The menu is long and delicious, and the love Wayne has for this business makes it all the better. The busier it gets and the more chaotic it is, the more fun it is, uh, the more like this place comes alive. A place that he hopes you can make your neighborhood spot. Well, look, 
look, when you're under the weather, the perfect remedy is something quick and warm. And this Friday flavor takes us to Virginia Beach to learn the legend behind 10 second noodle that you'll want all the time. The story does originate from a legend where it's a man who was studying and his wife really loved him and so she made these noodles for him and she had to cross this bridge. By the time that she crossed the bridge, she was like, the noodles are soggy and just not as good as they are when they're freshly made. So she came up with this idea of cooking the broth and putting it in a separate container, keeping it warm, adding a layer of oil on top to keep the broth warm. And then she kept the noodles um, separately with all the toppings on the side. So by the time she got to him, they were able to assemble it and the broth was hot enough to cook the noodles. So that's kind of like the origin of the story and how we got here. In Virginia Beach, 10 Second Noodle owner Jin Jin Chen says this dish is still just as simple. Um, we have this big, really hot bowl of soup and then we have all the toppings and within 10 seconds we get to put all of the toppings in and put the noodles in. But the broth flavors to go with the rice noodles are complex. So we have like the original flavor, we have um, the spicy flavor. If you're interested in like something tangy, we have something sour. The toppings come in troths with your pick of what you want to add to your broth. It is delicious. But if this isn't hitting the spot, they have tons of appetizers too. The um, popcorn chicken, they also love the pumpkin, um, the pumpkin cakes. But we also have bubble tea. The brown sugar bubble tea flavor was incredible. We also have some hibachi if you're just not in the mood for noodles. But trust me, get the broth and noodles. It's so good. Definitely something different. It's something fun, new, and it's a way to kind of experience Chinese culture a little bit. A culture that, in a way, she's crossing her own bridge to share with you. Well, when you wake up every day at 3 a.m., you learn to love some coffee. So, when I learned about a new coffee shop opening in Norfolk, I, of course, had to give it a try. Let me take you to Neptune's Fury Coffee at Waterside District. We've been cereal hobbyists, and this is the one that stuck. Friends Matt Rose and Jason Walker started by roasting beans in their garage. Yeah, we picked up a uh, small coffee roaster and a larger roaster, got better at it, had more coffee than knew what to do with, started selling it. And, and really where rubber hit the road from a business perspective is when we got into the farmer's markets. Becoming popular at farmer's markets and growing a following for their brand, Neptune's Fury Coffee. Cafe wasn't exactly in our sights years ago, but here we are. Neptune's Fury Cafe and Roastery is now open in Dominion Tower in Norfolk. The views are definitely spectacular. I love watching the tugs go by. We, we get the occasional pot of dolphins that go by. It's kind of surreal to be able to work here, especially coming from a farmer's market tent. An upgrade with the view, but keeping their roots in focus. You know, we've got our roastery here as well, and we intentionally glass that in so that way the roastery and, and that process when we are roasting is visible. They've got everything you could want in the form of coffee, and you can taste the love behind the bean. We have a full spectrum of dark to light roast, and we'd like to consider our brand, or I guess our, our offering, as an on-ramp into specialty coffee. So grab a cup and grab a bite, too. Bagel nuts have been really popular. We get those from a local company in Portsmouth. They are like a little piece of heaven filled with cream cheese. We expect to have a, a full lineup of pizza-style flatbreads, as well as um, looking at doing salads and some other options. Expect the food to start later this year, but don't wait until then. They're worth a visit today. Come on in, grab a cup of coffee, enjoy some uh, great Wi-Fi, great sites, and, um, and, and hopefully that'll help us become a destination and also share our space with others. And just a tip here, they do validate parking in the Weiland garage. That's the garage with the whale mural on it. So no excuse to not go check them out. And after the break, a Williamsburg staple will bring back some childhood memories. How one man's passion for kettle corn helped him build a business empire. Then if you're looking for something a little more savory, I'm checking out Drexler's wood fired grill in Hampton. Best 
childhood memories is breathing in the sweet smell while walking past a kettle corn stand at a fair or an amusement park or even a boardwalk. And it turns out we have a spot in Hampton Roads that many across the country are now considering the best. And I have to agree. Let me introduce you to Uncle Dave's Kettle Corn. We stare at well, I've always liked kettle corn. David Tufty says he started Uncle Dave's Kettle Corn on a whim with faith. First and foremost, we prayed about it. We honored the Lord in it. He opened all the doors. The first location popping up at the Williamsburg Premium Outlets. We started with the tent right over there in the grass and went through three renovations all the way to this. Now, Uncle Dave's is growing outside of Hampton Roads. We are now all the way from Lancaster, Pennsylvania to Tampa, Florida. It is growing on its own and the Lord has opened the doors. And I'll be honest, it felt like a blessing just to try some of this kettle corn. It is so good. We started out with the classic kettle corn and then we added the caramel and the cheese, and it just took off from there. They serve flavors like birthday cake, dill pickle, blue raspberry, salt and vinegar, churro, Chicago style. The list is long, but what makes it so delicious? <laughs> the oil we cook it in, the temperature we cook it at, all right? All those combinations make it the flavor and the taste of what it is. So, how hard can it be to cook kettle corn? Well, I gave it a try, and let me tell you, it is not easy. After putting in all of the hard work with all of the help I had on the side, I had one big question for David. Why do you keep doing it? Oh, I love it. <laughs> it's my passion. Oh, he's one of the best people you'll ever meet. If you see him, make sure you say hi. And they don't just sell kettle corn. They also have pork rinds and freshly squeezed lemonade. You can find the closest location to you by searching this story on our website, 13newsnow.com. Well, a food truck that once was a side hustle has now turned into a family's popular full-time business. Come with me as we check out the traveling classic donuts food truck. Classic is our names. I'm Carissa, so I'm the K. My husband is the L, LaVon, and then the A is And, and then our four children, Shane, Sequoia, Ian, and Chase. The Classic Donuts food truck is a family business. I just love working with my husband and children. Their creations are incredible, and I'm not the only one who thinks so. There's always a line waiting for the goodness. I don't feel like we're just something special. Can I have half a dozen, please? Can I do Oh, but they are, with homemade yeast donuts glazed to perfection and dripping on sticks, waiting for you to take them home. We do a glaze and a cinnamon sugar every time we're out. They have seasonal flavors, too. Right now, it's apple pie, um, maple, and pumpkin spice. Yes, they are made fresh. And my husband fries them so that the outsides are just a little crispy um, and the insides are just soft. I tried them all. They are heavenly circles of goodness. The original glazed will knock your socks off, but don't sleep on the apple pie and pumpkin lovers get the pumpkin spice. God has blessed us above and beyond. And they're blessing Hampton Roads with some of the best donuts I've ever had. Oh, they're so good. You can find Classic Donuts locations and hours on their social media pages. We have the link to those pages posted in the story on our website. All right, let's switch gears now to watch a much more savory selection. Phoebus is known for having unique spots to go grab a bite, and I have one that you're gonna wanna add to your list. Come with me to Hampton to learn what makes Drexler's Wood Fire Grill so special. From the beginning of time, fire, everything's cooked over fire. And that's also the case at Drexler's Wood Fire Grill in Hampton. Co-owner and head chef Eric Drexler discovered his love for food while traveling around the world, and he always finds one person to teach him. 
love to learn from the grandmothers. That's where the, the deep roots of, of cuisine stem from. He and co-owner Brad Monty try and foster what he's learned from others inside this spot. Come here, it's not just about you know the quality of food that he's serving, but it's the experience that goes along with that. The outdoor patio is large and peaceful, while the inside is calm and relaxing with the smell of the wood-fired grill cooking up the food. Our menu generally is American cuisine, in my opinion, with a worldly influence. Coffee pork is the staple entree on the menu. Eric and his late mentor came up with this delicious dish. Where we rub it, we wanted to put a faux smoke to it. So when you burn the coffee and then you braise it, it creates that smoky flavor. It's perfection, but they don't stop there. The empanadas are, are definitely to die for. I tried the lamb and olive empanada and it hit every taste bud in the best way. And you're supporting more than just Drexler's when you eat here. We source all of our products locally. It's important to support local farms because those are the ones out there putting in the work. A work that Brad and Eric love to share through their craft. Passion, it's right there. It comes from here, just like the grandmothers. Their, their food is passionate. And they want to share that passion with you. Being able to just service the community in the way in which we do um, is why I wake up every day. Well, next, we're headed to a small restaurant with a big reputation. You'll learn why Restaurant 185 in Pocosin is nationally recognized. Then we drive down to Northeast North Carolina, the history behind the historic building, now home to the Herringbone. Thirteen News Now is back with another Friday flavor extra bite. We head now to the peninsula where a small spot in Pocosin is getting national recognition. I got to try 185 and learn a little more about the mania behind the menu. <laughs> Come in that door. If I'm on the line, I'm hollering your name. Lenora Garland says when she opened 185 in Pocosin, she had one idea. We knew we would, if we served good food, people would come, and they did. She, along with head chef Aaron Rosario, whip up the goods in their kitchen. We offer what you want for breakfast as far as having your standard eggs and bacon and pancakes and french toast, but then we tweak it up a notch. I tried their smoked brisket omelet with smash browns. Our smoked brisket is delicious. Chesney does a fabulous job with it, and we use it in several different things. Their 185 plate gives you options. I chose two eggs, french toast, bacon, and Creole cheese grits. And I'd say 95% of the people who don't like grits try our grits and are like, okay, I'll take that shrimp and grits. They're delicious, but my favorite item, the fried chicken skin BLT. Oh my goodness. That's just, just a unique sandwich that you just don't see anywhere else. This spot is one of my favorites, and I'm not alone in saying that. At our, when we won the award uh, through Yelp for 87 out of 100. 185 made Yelp's list of the top 100 restaurants in the United States in 2023, coming in at 87th in the country. We were absolutely floored by that. We love being that mom and pop place that people love to go to. So, what's next for 185? People always ask me, they say you need a bigger boat, you, you need to expand, and I don't want to. I love this little place. This is my place. This is my second home. And she hopes you can find home here too. Let me say it one more time for you. Fried chicken skin BLT. Mm. Now, 185 has gourmet nights as well. You can show up all dressed up and have five-star dining with a full course menu. But let's go from Pocosin to Virginia Beach, where one eatery is putting a twist on a classic Filipino recipe. Come with me to Lumpia and Company, the land of dessert Lumpia. I'm half Filipino. My dad was from the Philippines. Head chef Zachary Augustine says the reason Lopia and Company in Virginia Beach is so unique is because of his parents. His brother Travis says the Navy played a role too. My dad was in the Navy. Everywhere we moved to, you know, everyone kind of already had some sort of exposure to Filipino food. But when we opened this restaurant up, we said that we wanted to kind of do something different. We wanted to put a more of an Americanized twist. So Chef Zach got to work. 
tried different things over the years. We have the Philly cheesesteak lumpia, which is very popular. The bacon gouda burger, which is probably my favorite one out of all of them. My favorite too. The flavor in this one is incredible. It's really cool seeing people's reaction coming in here and say, yep. Oh, you know, wow. I, I never imagined putting buffalo chicken into a lumpia or a curry veggie lumpia. You know, I never thought of anything like this. The options for lumpia seem endless. And if you like the norm, they have you covered too. Our classic lumpia is the standard Filipino lumpia. Our pans, it's very popular. But they aren't done there. We offer like a stir fry dish that we call Asian noodles. And then we put a different twist on adobo. And don't forget the dessert. So we offer four different types of dessert lumpia, the creamy apple crisp, the banana bomb, which is a classic Filipino dessert called turon, Oreo lumpia, uh, pina colada lumpia, just all of them are just amazing. They become great crowd pleasers. This family wants to live up to their name. Lumpia is kind of like that central piece of, you know, the, the good quality company that a lot of people have. And uh, so we kind of really wanted to showcase that here. They say bringing Lumpia and company to Hampton Roads is an honor. It's just been a blessing for God to be able to do this, not only with our family, but just to meet some of the amazing people in this community. And we get to do it every single day. Well, this next feature takes us to North Carolina, where good food meets good views, and you're surrounded by good people. Come with me to Edenton to visit the Herringbone. If you haven't been to Edenton, you gotta come down and visit. When you visit, stop by the Herringbone. We are in the South, so we wanted a Southern feel. Owner Joe Walk says he and his wife opened this spot with preserving it at top of mind. Keeping in the spirit of our town, we decided to restore it and do it in a way that really is a shout out to the history of this area. So everything in here is about Northeastern North Carolina. Tobacco leaves, tobacco sticks, cotton, peanuts, all the things that made uh, this town Town, and then especially the herring fishing industry. The inside is stunning and the outside amazing seating looking over the Chihuahuan River. You can even tie up your boat. We made it kind of into a little museum as much as a restaurant. So come for the space but stay for the food. Everything that we serve is made fresh. Chef Kyle Murphy makes sure of it. It's delicious. Serving up things like fresh fish, mussels, bluefish cake, everything served perfectly. But there's one other thing that's really special. We have a really, really cool wood-fired pizza oven. Pies like margarita, prosciutto pear, yes, you heard me right, or get the fan favorite, spicy sausage. Did I mention Kyle's wife, Becca? She makes amazing, I'm, amazing desserts. She's the pastry chef and an artist. These sweets are incredible, not only visually, but they are like little bites of heaven. So good. Whether it be for a drink, brunch, lunch, dinner, or dessert, Herringbone is worth a stop. It really is a community space, a place we consider not just ours, but it's, it's really for the community. And they hope to make you a part of the community too. Well, the sweetest stories are coming up next. First, we visit a bakery full of unique desserts. Then we check out a family who changed their business. How Sunday Scoop came about and a look at their extraordinary flavors. flavor we showcase a number of cultures that have brought their specialties right here to Hampton Roads from bread box cafe to 10 second noodle and lumpia and company now to a bakery bringing a taste of Ukraine to Virginia Beach this variety flavor takes us to creme bakery and cafe where there's a lot of heart behind the menu Irina and Maxim Kremenchudsky opened Creme Bakery and Cafe with comfort in mind. We've got some soft jazz music playing, some tables that you can come sit down, read a book, have a coffee. Their focus, unique desserts. I don't think anyone else in the region does what she does. Irina whips up tarts, eclairs, but one thing that stands out, the mousse. So orange is, it's an orange mousse pastry. Orange mousse, inside of the orange mousse, it's a candied oranges, fresh oranges, and orange gel. And then dipped in chocolate and mint, just a little bit, yeah, on top. It's 
so good. The lemon pastry also incredible, and you have to try the honey cake. The honey cake is leaning back into our Ukrainian background, our Ukrainian roots. I actually came to the U.S. in 96 with my parents when I was uh, eight years old. I came to United States 10 years ago as a student. With Russia invading Ukraine nearly two years ago, it's been tough for this couple. Uh, it just sits real close to the heart, you know. She's got uh, relatives over there. I've got my grandparents still in Kiev. And she turned her love of baking into Ukraine benefit. So we collected something like $25,000 in three months that we were doing the macaroons. Money going directly to Ukraine and they aren't stopping there. Clothes. We did shoes, we did knee pads, uh, oh, gloves, the, the vests. Best. You guys are doing so much. We're trying. we're trying. And they're trying to serve Hampton Roads too through their food. Definitely try the entrees. And we've got a croque monsieur which is a very popular hot ham and cheese sandwich from France. The Ukrainian side we've got serniki. I like when they return the empty plates. Whether you order a lunch, dessert, or just a cup of coffee, expect a lot of heart behind it at Creme Bakery and Cafe. I, I'm so happy. I, I'm really happy that like this is probably the most important thing when people enjoy what you are doing. Well, as we wrap up this special broadcast, I want to leave you with the scoop. This next Friday flavor is on the border of Virginia Beach and Chesapeake, where a family is serving up the good stuff with a cherry on top. Come with me to Sunday Scoop. Ice cream makes people happy. <laughs> right. Philip Perel says he and his wife were done with the nine to five life. So Sunday Scoop in Virginia Beach was born. You can't even talk about ice cream without smiling. For him, it's more than the cone. It's just one of those things where it brings families together. An experience crafted with perfection. You gotta have the chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, but then you also wanna have something that's gonna be super unique. Their flavors are amazing. Maple bacon and cornbread. Pumpkin spice and turmeric was a complete accident. There's apple pie in there, there's peach cobbler, there's banana pudding, cinnamon coffee, which is like cinnamon toast crunching coffee that's in there, just tons. Uh, we've made over 100 flavors just last year alone and still counting. I tried them, each bite packed with flavor that's made in-house. My favorite, the lemon raspberry. Owning the business is probably one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. However, I, I do want to show my kids, I want to show other people who look like myself, that hey, we can excel at customer service. If one veteran can do it, someone else can as well. Yes, this spot is veteran owned. Being in the Army definitely gave me the belief that I can accomplish anything I put my mind to. And he focuses his mind on ice cream. Selfishly, I do this for myself so I can see people smile and spread that joy and enjoy it with them. Spreading happiness scoop by scoop or shake by shake. Try their cold brew shake. Trust me. Or grab their namesake and try a sundae. Well, I will keep going with Sunday Scoop as long as we make people happy. So as long as people are coming in and supporting us and helping us, we're going to give back to them and we're going to make sure that they're represented and that. So I'd say expect Sunday Scoop around for a while. And hey guys, I am always serving up Friday flavors every week and I am open to suggestions. So if you have a place you want me to check out, shoot me an email or reach out to me on social media. That's all I have for now, but be sure to catch new spots on Friday Flavor each week on Daybreak. It airs weekdays from 4.30 until 7 a.m. Thanks for watching this Friday Flavor Extra Bite.